My name is Cindy Napoli and I'm a member of the Littleton Board of Selectmen. One of the goals of the Board of Selectmen is to address the opioid crisis that is gripping our nation and local communities, including Littleton. Over the past two years, the Selectmen have taken initiatives to raise awareness about addiction and the danger of opioids. These initiatives included the showing of the documentary, If They Had Known, at the high school, which raised awareness about the dangers of mixing prescription drugs with alcohol. We also collaborated with the Littleton Public Schools to arrange for guest speaker Richie Farrell to speak to the high school students and their parents. Through connections made with members of our community and with assistance from the Littleton Police Department and the Littleton Fire Department, the Littleton Coalition Against Addiction was created to help raise awareness and provide information about resources available to help anyone battling addiction or seeking help for a friend or a family member. The LCAA refers to opioid addiction as the epidemic hiding in plain sight. Many people prefer to believe that our community is immune from this crisis, but Littleton has already lost two young adults to opioid-related overdoses, and many of our neighbors are currently in treatment or have luckily been able to win their battle by overcoming addiction. As part of the initiative to raise awareness, I will be meeting with different members from our community who have bravely volunteered to come forward and share their personal story on LCTV. It is our hope that by sharing these stories, the stigma that is associated with addiction will stop and people will be empowered to seek help while others will embrace their courage and support them during their struggle to overcome this terrible disease. Following each segment, we will share a list of local resources and that information is also av available on the town's website and the Littleton Coalition Against Addiction Facebook page. So I wanted to introduce you now to David Jackson, who has been brave enough to come forward and share his story with you so that he can help others. So, hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Good. So you want, you want me to just start with a little bit of my story? But Please. Like it, it was probably 1980, I broke my ankle, broke my fibula. Years and years went on, and I ended up getting like arthritis in my bones, and got painful, painful, so I talked to my primary doctors and he hooked me up with some doctors at Lowell General and I went in, I think it's 2012, to have my fibula cleaned out and all my joints cleaned out so I could walk, you know, without pain. And during that time, my doctors, um, you know, they, they stayed on it, but the, I ended up getting a, a Mercer infection, staph and strep infection at Lowell General, so I left there with a lot of pain in my ankle. Mm -hmm. So my doctors were, you know, they thought they were very good to me and they took care of me, but in the meantime, they were giving me about 200 Percocets a month. And wow. I just, and I, it just, it just really did a, you know, I mean, I, I think I needed it at the time, but okay. there was a time to get off and, you know, and that's what, was, that's when it all started. Right, right. So what happened when you decided that you wanted to cut back and you wanted to not take as much medication? I think it was probably, it was a good, probably a year and a half. My doctors kept feeding me and feeding me and feeding me. And then they started realizing that I had a problem too. And I, you know, it was beyond the point where, you know, they started cutting me back and I had, you know, I had still had fake pain in my head. Okay. You know, because of the, you know, not sleeping at night, panic attacks and these other different things that happened to me, you know, which, you know, I couldn't cure because I really thought I needed that painkiller. Right. And it was a real battle um, until I started, you know, going out, buying them, looking for them, this and that. After another year or so, I stayed on them. Um, me and my wife finally had a talk, and she knew I had a, an issue. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to, I think I did three, in and out of three rehabs. I went to Danvers, and then I went to uh, Emerson Hospital. I spent three weeks in rehab okay. uh, to get out of this situation that was just unbelievable. Right, right. So how did you find the resources to get help? Um, just online. Okay. You know, my, my wife looked online, and you know, we had heard you know, heard different things. I mean, it's not a big secret on TV. It's all over TV now, phone okay. numbers and this and that. Right. So it wasn't hard to find. Okay, right. You know. And how how was that process? I, I did, uh, the, I went to the Danvers thing first. Um, that didn't really work out because it was, you know, it wasn't a situation that I was involved in with the, with the pain pills. It was a little more, a little extensive more than I had. So I ended up going to Emerson Hospital Okay. Um, so the first time I actually did fail, but second uh, couple of weeks, couple of weeks in Emerson Hospital, uh, you know, it really worked out good. I was in there for a week at a time, and I left there. And um, you know, I just it was just a battle after that, but it, it was something that I, 
I really needed to do. I had a lot of support with my wife and my mom and dad, and um, you know, it, it got easier and easier as time went on. That's great. That's yeah. really wonderful. Good for you. Um, so I just wanted to back up for a second. So at one point you said that you know you were you the doctors kept feeding you and feeding you, and eventually they must have said enough, and they didn't write you scripts anymore. And then you went outside and found exactly. them somewhere else. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, because they they I had realized too that it was a fake pain, but right. it wasn't the pain in my ankle. I knew that was going on, but it was in my head. You know that j just that you know to to come down off it. It was a detox. Okay. And to come down off it was just awful. But I knew you know what I was doing. I knew it was wrong, and I and I knew I had support, and I just I had to do something. It was just time. Right. And and I I'm, I'm glad I did it. And you know, as of right now, I feel great. And and um, you know, it's just a horrible thing. Right. Right. Well, I mean, good for you. Honestly, you're lucky to be sitting here telling your story because. A lot of people, it escalates even beyond the pills, and it, it can get so much worse. So it's great that you had the family support that you needed, and that you found a treatment program that worked for you. I know uh, there's other people out there that are struggling. W what would you say to them? What advice or uh, any words that, of encouragement? Or I, I, I think the biggest thing is, like, you know, when I keep stressing that I have a, you know, my wonderful wife helped me, my mom and dad were there 110 110 percent my little sister helped me but i mean there's probably a lot of people out there that don't have the support i have mm -hmm. so that that might not be the right way to put it but i mean you, you got to have it in your head you got to realize that you you know you're spending your money i um, mean you, you know you're lying you're you're cheating yourself you're losing your respect um you know your trust i mean it takes a long time to get that back and right you know the sooner you get off it it's just, it's gonna bite you it's just it's just no good and it did an awful job on me um I got a whole different respect for drugs and drug addicts and this and that because I realize that it, it, it's, a, it's, it's gonna get you and like we both say, it's, it, there's nobody too big, too strong, too small. Right, it's right. gonna get everybody, it just right. does. Yeah, it, it just happens, everything. right, it right, exactly. Yep. Exactly, so that's, I think that's important for people to hear because I know there's a lot of shame that goes Absolutely. with being addicted and I know you had some reservations uh, about coming on the show to talk about being addicted yep. because of the stigma. Exactly. So a big part of what we're doing here tonight in a part of um, doing these, these tapings is to try to stop the stigma surrounding it because like we said, anybody can become addicted. Absolutely. No one's immune. Yep, so, absolutely. Right, right. Yep. And the shame, you know, the shame goes away and it really does, a lot of people don't think that when, you're, when you are addicted and you go on and on and on, like I say, you lose your trust and your, you know, your support in a sense, but then when you do get off it, you realize that you, you do get that all back, right? Because you lost so much in them, just in this last five years or last three years. The three years prior to the last two years have been great, but when I was when I was addicted and what I was doing and you know I was just cheating myself and it's, it was just no good, man. It just took took a hold of me, right? And it's just a horrible thing. So I just I don't see how anybody cannot want to get out of it right. that is involved in it, right? Right, um, which is understandable, but it's just a matter of taking that first step. So good for you. For, for coming to that realization, and, and I know your wife, you said, had helped and, yep. and everything. Um, so, like I said, c congratulations, you're, you're a survivor of addiction. Um, it really is uh, something that people can't control. It's, we look at it as a health crisis, um, and like you said, no one's immune. So I appreciate you coming here tonight to share your story um, and, and with the hope of helping others in the community. Yeah, that would be nice. Just one more, one more thing is like it, it does sneak up on you. Because like I say, it was prescription to me and before you know it. So right. for everybody out there that's just, you know, taking a few here and there, it just sneaks up and before you know it, you're hooked. Right, right. So, that's good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. you coming by. Okay. And uh, like I said, I want to say congratulations. I don't know if that's appropriate, but oh, of course it is. happy yep. that you're here, yep. so to speak, and, and that you came forward to share your, your story that's with good. us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Yep.